Wide Angle Conversations, DEI Talks, an initiative of Life by Design with Karuna Agarwal. Raising awareness about the importance of diversity and inclusion and bringing to you insights and best practices from DEI advocates and champions. Welcome to Wide Angle Conversations, DEI Talks 2021. I'm in conversation today with Alistair Ong. Alistair is the Vice Chairperson of Purple Parade, Singapore's largest movement supporting inclusion and celebrating the abilities of persons with disabilities. Alistair is a source of inspiration for all. He was born with cerebral palsy, but that did not stop him from his experience of life. Alistair holds a Bachelor of Economics from SMU and has been working since graduating from 2017. He is a thought leader and a motivational speaker well recognized in the Asia Pacific region. Alistair is also the recipient of the Gochok Tong Enable Awards 2020. Welcome to Wide Angle Conversations, Alistair. You've achieved so much at such a young age while managing life with a disability. Please, could you share a little bit of your story with us? Yes, sure. I'll be happy to share my story. I was born with cerebral palsy and it was because at birth I did not cry and there was a lack of oxygen to my brain. Oh. So the part of my brain that controls my hands and legs are being affected. And growing up was very challenging for me because I could not walk, I could not run. I used to share this example as well that even the small little things in life I cannot do. For example, if I drop something on the floor, I can't even pick it up. And this makes me feeling like there are so many things that I can't do in life. Makes me feel that other people are actually better than me. But there's a social barrier as well. Because before having this motorized wheelchair, it's just a normal manual one. And I require people to actually push me around. And if nobody pushes me, I can't even participate actively with society, with group of friends. And there's this kind of social barrier that I feel that I have towards other people as well. But overcoming these challenges, it has led me to realize that there are still things in my life that I can give, that I can contribute to others. Mm -hmm. I don't have to just receive help, but I can give to others as well. And when I started to realize that, I started to find my purpose and meaning in my life. And one of it is to really use my life as an encouragement to many people around. I used to not like this disability because I didn't like being different from others. Mm -hmm. I thought that when I'm different, it means that I'm excluded. If I'm different, it means that I'm not welcome, I'm not valued by other people. But I realized that this disability has a story. It has a story of overcoming challenges. It has a story of resilience. And this story is actually very helpful to other people around me. And so that's why right now, one of my greatest passion is really to impact the lives of the youth, the next generation, to really share with everyone that every single one of us can make a difference in the lives of other people. That's so amazing and such an empowering thought for everyone who is listening. Right? And thank you for sharing that with us. As you're sharing about your challenges, Alistair, I'm also thinking of the caregivers, your parents, your teachers, and everyone who supported you. What do you think has been their role in developing the personality that you are today? So there have been many people around me who have been supporting me, my parents, my caregivers, my helper, people who are in school, for example, my teachers, my friends, or even therapies and educational guidance officers from different social service agencies as well. And all these have really brought me mm. and helped me to come a long way to where I am. And I think one of the most important things is to not just understand and know the disability, which is what they have all done well, but to look beyond the disability, to see the potential, to see the abilities, to see the growth that a person has, and to call forth the value that's inside that person. I think that is very, very important. And those are the ones that really helped me to bring me to where I am today. Well, that's very empowering thought for anyone who's listening in. And you have just described inclusion with your words. Society has changed. It is much more inclusive. Um, but what more needs to be done? And how has the acceptance 
of persons with disability changed over the years? I think as a whole in society, we have really come a long way from where we have been previously. Compared to 20 over years ago, Singapore is way much more accessible right now. Back then, the bus, the trains, they are not accessible at all. The bus, they have steps to even go up. And for the trains, they don't have lifts. They only have escalators. And some of the fare gates were even narrow as well. I remember growing up when my mom used to bring me out. She would need to actually push a stroller up the escalator. You can imagine how dangerous it might have been because there aren't any lifts. And that is the only way that we can access to transport. And that's the only way that we can access to the greater community at large. But over right now, things are way much more accessible. I can go out independently by myself with this motorized wheelchair. I can take the lifts, go to the platform, board the trains and reach my destination. So things are very well right now in terms of the physical space. And when we talk about the social space as well, things are improving and getting better. There has been way much more awareness of persons with disabilities as well. Many initiatives, either by the government, by the private sector, and all. So it's really very good initiatives that we are moving forward in this area. And people's reaction as well. In the past, people might not be aware of how to interact with persons with disabilities, for example. Mm. But right now, whenever I go out, if they see me trying to tap my Isolink card or things like that, they will actually come and offer and say, do you need any help? Is there any way that I can help you? And I think society is more mature in such a sense that we are brave enough to approach this topic about disability right now. That there isn't a need to be hush-hush about it or to avoid it or to distance from it. Mm -hmm. uh, there isn't any much apprehension. And so one of the things is just to ask and to offer a landing hand. I think that's very important. And so progressing forward, I hope to see mm -hmm. that we continue this effort and very much more that we can continue to do as well. That we don't reach this complacent stage, but we continue to look towards employment as well. Social integration and inclusion that can happen in our society. So coming to the workplace right now, as per the government survey of 2021, we currently have about 29% of PWDs in the workforce, mainly working in the social sector, manufacturing, F&B, and then administrative services. Well, that's a really good number. Uh, what more do you think can be done in terms of policy making and for the mainstream organizations to be more inclusive to the PWDs? I think all of us have to come together, whether it's it the people, the private or the public sector. We all need to work together as one nation, as one society. And one of the things that we can look into is probably job redesign. Are there current job scopes that we have? Are we able to redesign them such that it will be available for persons with disabilities to perform the role and the task as well? Not changing it totally, but redesigning it in such a way that it becomes accessible for persons with disabilities so that they can work efficiently in the organization as well. Are there assistive technologies or tools or devices that could actually help persons with disabilities to continue in that role. So I think one of it is really looking into job redesign and the usage of assistive technology to enable persons with disabilities. Wonderful. The second thing that I thought that it would be nice is that if all of us can really come together as well to not only just look at job redesign mm. and not just look at assistive technology, for example, but all of us can really champion it. All of us can really spread the word and to share with other people that actually inclusion is very important. And having a diverse group of people really benefits every one of us organization because it brings diverse thoughts, diverse ideas, diverse strategies. And that's where we can continue to experience growth when all of us bring our differing views, coming together, brainstorming, having ideas, creativity. I think that is something that we look forward to, especially in this ever-changing world. Right. And having said that, Alistair, we still have a large percentage of the PWDs who are not in the workforce. While some of them cannot come out and, you know, be in the mainstream, but for those who can, what do you think is blocking them, really, from living and creating a life for themselves the way you have? I think really a various factors that come into play. 
-hmm. as my own personal experience. When I was growing up, my dad used to tell me, study finance, study hard, so that when you grow up, you can do finance, you can stay at home and make a lot of money. My mom would tell me, study hard, so that when you grow up, you can be a tuition teacher. You can invite students to come to your home, so that you can earn a lot of money and you don't have to go out at all. So those were the mindsets and the conceptions back then. And I understand where my parents are coming from as well. Of course, they love me and they care for me very much. Probably they will have concerns. How would I be able to go into the office? Will there be anybody who is able to help me in the office? What if I need help? What if, and back then, without the digitalization and things like that, with the usage of technology, there might be a lot of foulings to do as well. Right. 20 years ago, I think we all lived through that age. How would I be able to reach for files high in the shelves, for example, printing? Am I able to go to the printer to print and stack papers? I think those were the mindsets and the conceptions back then, or at least for me when I was growing up. So I think one thing that's very important is that to create a very conducive environment, an environment that's encouraging, an environment that sees beyond the limitations, I think that is very important. And so when I was growing up, I thought to myself, why do I just have to stay at home? I can go out as well. <laughs> and so that's what I've been doing, going out there all the way, really sharing and encouraging many other people and organizations as well. And I'm thankful. I know that they have good intentions and I'm thankful to where I've been as well, even right now. And so creating a very supportive environment mm -hmm. that is okay to fail. Yeah. It's, to, it's to accept failure in our lives, to know that it's okay to fail. Mm -hmm. Because when we fail, we pick ourselves up and we try again and again and again. Because there will be success one day. I think that is very important to really inculcate these values mm -hmm. in our younger generation, especially persons with disabilities who are growing up in their developmental years. And for those who have already passed through that stage, I think that it's very important for all of us to go through training as well. Persons with or without disabilities, I think it's important for all of us. We always talk about lifelong learning. We, we always say that learning never stops. I think that is very important because we need to continue to stay relevant mm. to the society, to the business world, to the ever-changing things that are happening. So staying relevant and one of the ways is to continue to learn, continue to go for trainings, continue to go for courses. And I remember just recently, we have been launching the Lifelong Learning Enabling Fund as well, okay. where persons with disabilities can tap on the fund. And I think these initiatives are very important for every one of us to continue to train, to continue to learn, yeah. so that we can continue to be relevant in society. Yeah, it is, it is important to have initiatives like this and to be able to create an awareness for the people who are impacted by it. And of course, having inspirational speakers like yourself coming and talking more about uh, how you have created and how it is important to have your own attitude, which can lead us to design the life that we want. Um, Alistair, every time I have spoken to you, I have realized that you have a lot of energy. You know, there's a lot that you want to accomplish. So, what is on your bucket list for the next five years? Well, for the next five years, on my bucket list, I would love to continue to travel. I hope that this pandemic will be over. We'll be able to travel very, very soon. Continue to travel, but not only that, but I want to continue to impact the lives of other people. Continue to go to countries around the region sharing with them the stories that we can all come together to overcome and achieve together in life. Continue to go to more organizations as well, to champion, to share about diversity and inclusion. How can we continue to build an inclusive culture? I think these are the things that really drives me, motivates me and gives me the energy to keep mm -hmm. moving forward in life. Wonderful. And we wish you all the best for that. Um, how would you like the how would you like to see the society emerge in the future? I think I would like to see society coming together as one. That is no longer me versus you, I versus you. 
I'm with or without a disability. I'm of this group or that group. Mm. But we coming together as a common identity, that we are one united people, we are one nation, we are one global workforce, whichever terms that we want to yeah. describe ourselves, coming together, embracing diversity, celebrating it, in fact, not shunning away from it, but really valuing diversity in everything that we do, seeing that that's really the importance of diversity that in turn helps every one of us as well. And to not just talk the talk, but to walk the walk as well. To really be inclusive. To create an inclusive culture for every one of us. To thrive and to grow in wherever we are in. To celebrate the abilities of every one of us. Whether is it with or without disabilities, different one of us will have different challenges, different limitations in life. But there will be strengths that each of us are unique and that we can give and contribute as well. So it's about celebrating every individual and celebrating the humanity in each one of us. Thank you so much, Alistair. That was a very inspiring conversation and I took a lot from here. Thank you and may you keep inspiring people. More power to you. Thank you very much, Taruna, for having me here. It's really my honor and I'm very encouraged by what you do as well. Let's continue to champion diversity and inclusion together. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much.